Hey everyone, this is June from Turning Point Life Investment, and I have uh, Chris with me. Hi everybody. And this is your market analysis for August second, two thousand and eleven. All right, Chris, let's let's uh, take it away. Sure. Uh, I wanted to start with the daily view for the S and P five hundred. Um, I just wanted to start with yesterday's candle with the small real body high upper and lower shadow. Uh, the market really didn't know where it wanted to go yesterday, of course, because of all the debt ceilings and all that kind of things. So then it, it really didn't have a direction. And today it showed its direction of where it wanted to go. Um, this is just a gigantic black candle today. It does feel like an extreme, especially after about, what, seven days straight down. But uh, overall, if we, if we stick to the technicals, it still looks bearish out there. Now, I'm going to draw a neckline for this is the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder. And it looks like today it broke that level. So I'm still not really wanting to go on the long side because of the break of the neckline. Now, because it does feel like an extreme, I mean, there are some other possibilities out there that if this market makes a rally back up, especially mine, then it's actually got room to breathe to the upside. And then the first resistance level is probably going to be around 1300 uh, if the market does break that head and shoulders neckline. And once it is 1300, we'll see what happens. If the bulls can get above 1300, then we have a foothold. But until then, I really don't expect the market to really be doing anything, especially after seven days down. I'm not really quite sure if it's going to continue. I mean, it can go lower, but it just doesn't feel like it, it can move lower just for now. And then it, there's no sign of the bulls yet buying to move it up to 1300. So probably I wouldn't be surprised at just be seeing some more of a choppiness or consolidation wise uh, going on with the market for the next couple of days. There's stuff. I'm going to go into the hourly view and zoom in for a bit. We can see that, I mean, just the market opened with a gap down and it just sold off the whole day uh, without a hiccup. Really, um, it just there is some divergence going on with the MACD histogram. So, and stochastics are overbought. When we see that, we're expecting some type of a relief rally, at least short-term relief rally or sideways movement going on. We'll see what. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Still a bit unsure if this market's really going to, I mean, it can, it can continue, continue down, but with the oversold stochastics, divergence in the MACD, a lot of signs point, um, point up. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if this market wants to make a move up and probably hits the 1275 level. That's also most likely where the 20-hour exponential moving average will come down if this market wants to make a, at least a relief, short-term relief rally. Next, we're going to go into the daily view for the VIX, and you know, with, with the extreme bearishness going on, and the market made a technically it made a new low. Uh, the VIX didn't make a new high, so you know it did have a bullish day, white candle up, uh, but it's it just it didn't go with the extreme selling that happened today, and. I really want the VIX to probably get above these highs right here, above 26. I really, just if the market continues to sell off, I want to see this VIX pop above 26, just to correlate with that there is real, real fear going on. Uh, if it doesn't, then we're gonna we're we're gonna see a different change in psychology in the market. That not everyone is panic selling, but today it did feel like a lot of people were just selling and selling and taking profits. Um, you have anything to add, June? Um, yeah, I think I think overall uh, today did feel like a, a pretty extreme move to the downside. And um, you know, I mentioned to you guys just just be careful. Anytime the market expects an impending news, 
and you just never know what's going to happen. I think a lot of people were expecting a, some kind of a relief rally because of you know the the resolution of the debt ceiling and whatever the case is. But you always have to pay attention to the price action first. It doesn't matter what news is out there. Um, the chart always comes first, and the chart says it wants to break down today. So for me, I, I think today was a was a was at least a good sign to tell us that uh, the market wants to head lower. But of course, nothing goes straight down forever. And like Chris said, we've been down for seven days in a row. Um, not that it can't be eight tomorrow, uh, but again, there's a, there's a certain probability where you're just getting so stretched out to the market that that uh, sooner or later we're going to get that snapback. And if this is truly a change in trend in the market and we're starting to head lower, um, you have to realize you're going to have to switch up your, tra uh, your trading a little bit, okay? Because if, you're, if you guys uh, ever trade it to a downtrend, it goes down fast and it, go down, and it goes down pretty hard as well. But it, al it can also rebound fast and, and hard as well. So that's something you have to be careful about uh, is these downtrends, they can get very volatile. Okay, so that's assuming if we're starting a new downtrend. Uh, but so far, things are looking like it could, you know, it's heading towards that direction. Um, but that's pretty much it as far as my two cents. All right, I'll go into some some of my stocks that I'm taking a look at. First one is CMG, and I'm gonna have to zoom in here for a bit, but it is holding support at this around 320 level and if I zoom in we can see a left shoulder a head and a right shoulder so if the market does continue to break down and this head and shoulders pattern does break especially around this neckline around 320 or so uh, then we're gonna see more selling come in to CMG I wouldn't be surprised for it to maybe first target hit 310 it's 50 day exponential moving average but I just I'm gonna keep this on my watch list uh, and see if the markets just continue to sell off. Next stock that I wanted to take a look at is DE. And uh, this was on my watch list that I posted, I believe, on Saturday. And it just had a nice breakdown today, uh, right under $77.50. Volume did pick up, and it looks like it wants to continue to the downside. And I wouldn't be surprised for this thing to hit these lows back here around $73 and 20 cents or so. It would probably take a while to do that, but if the markets continue selling off, then <laughs> maybe it won't be that long to take that. It could Another, be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, uh, speaking of that, uh, I talked about NVR on the Saturday analysis how I wanted to see a break under 675 and my target was around these lows right here around 658 or 660 and that target was hit today so I'm already out of this trade even though there's potential more bearish signs to go but uh, you know whenever you know we, we just can't predict how fast the market wants to move uh, to the upside or the downside um, the last stock I want to take a look at. It's actually the sector. It's XSD, the semiconductor sector, ETF. And it just had a really nice breakdown uh, from this triangle today. So I, I would be expecting um, more selling to come in to this sector. Uh, June, is there anything that you're taking a look at? Um, honestly, no. <laughs> Because, uh, like I said, I, I'm just saying that the market could be changing trend. So there's really no point in going long other than if you are speculative and you want to play a bounce, then sure. But for the most part, I think, I think the uptrend is showing some signs of damage. Um, the only thing that we have going for us is LVS, which I, uh, you know, I told you guys, you know, it's always good to have some profit, especially like, uh, like today where we just don't know what's going to happen especially due to uh, all these anticipation on, on the news. And then we got this tank uh, today. It's not broken yet. I mean, the trend is still valid. It's still above its 20-day moving average. But to see a big dark candle like today, it's not the most uh, appealing thing to see. 
Um, so if it breaks under the 20, then then I don't know. I don't know if I want to be in the stock anymore. Um, but I did also take profit for my own self yesterday as well, and I hope that you guys uh, did so too. But other than that, as far as trading wise, short term, if if we're going to go short, I think I'd rather wait for a rebound in the market to go short. Um, I think going short right now at this point might be a, just a tad late. I'm not saying that it can't go lower, but maybe just a tad late. Um, um, so overall, if you like I said, if you're going to go long, I th I don't think it's going to be any more than just a quick rebound play, unless we get a complete reversal tomorrow, which can happen, and we've seen that before where anything can happen. So that's about it. Yeah, I just just if this is not your type of environment. Just stay in cash. That's that's really all I can say. If this is too violent for you and this is too volatile, just stay out. <laughs> to be honest, just it, it's it's just like that. Okay, that it's as simple as that. If it's not something you want to play with, don't. Cool. Anything else, Chris? Uh, no, that's about it. I mean, it sucks sometimes that you just gotta stay out of the markets. Uh, but we're here to make money. We're not here to gamble, and we're not here to force trades. Yeah. Exactly. All right, then. Then um, we'll see what happens, and we'll talk to you guys on the forum. We'll talk again on Thursday.